Hello, all, and welcome to uh, perhaps your first time with myself, Chris Wilding, and my lovely co-host tonight, Davison. Good evening. I run a podcast called the Bi-Quarterly Women's Social Club here out of Montreal, and if you're not familiar with it, it's very uh, not safe for work. We interview uh, everyone from uh, C-list, D-list, X-list celebrities to uh, freaks of the week. I mean, uh, you name it, you flaunt it, we flog it, etc., and vice versa. Um, it's a very special night tonight. Uh, we're usually live, uh, my podcast, every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern over at bqwsc.com slash live. Uh, it's the Sunday night. In fact, I'm interfering. I'm, I'm very sorry with a fellow podcaster's uh, show right now. He has a show every Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I'm a part of the Pot Awful Network, and uh, the, the flagship show, Pot Awful, is going on right now, so my apologize uh, my apologies to Jesse, um, but it's a very special show tonight because we have a very exclusive interview tonight. Um, Davison, you're from Montreal. I'm from Montreal. Uh, talk to me about uh, this developing story, this this story that has been at the top of the headlines uh, on this uh, obviously a very slow news day. <laughs> well, last week a woman apparently entered the Montreal Metro with a bag and sat down in one of the Metro cars and proceeded mm -hmm. to take out a dead bird, pluck yeah. it, and then eat it raw. Now that's that's the alleged story. And today, um, you know, some online sleuths or uh, I don't know exactly who, someone found her Facebook page where she was posting about this and she was very excited that she uh, had found this this newfound fame. I don't know if excited is the right word. We're going to get her on in a second. Her name's Christina David. Uh, she is also from Montreal. And uh, she explained a few things uh, on some of her Facebook posts that were picked up by various uh, news outlets today. Let me see if I can get some of those quotes. Um, what were your first thoughts in seeing the video, Davison? And is it possible to play the video uh, for those of us uh, who are watching now via Google Hangouts. Uh, you can also catch the audio stream of this uh, interview at bqwsc.com slash live. Um, but is there any way to play the video so everyone's on the same page, uh, no matter where they are in the world? Well, I will just pull that up in a second, but m to answer your question, my reaction to it, of course, was obviously the woman is not mentally well, or right. she's trying to shock everyone, like maybe it's an artist yeah. who wanted this to go viral. It's a social commentary about meat eating yeah. or something, how barbaric it is, perhaps. You know, that's how Yoko Ono met John Lennon in the club <laughs> in London. She actually, really? she went, yeah, she went that she was milking a cow in the tube, and he said, oh, I'm rather like her. Uh, but a bird over there in London is, is something totally If you're plucking a bird in, in, in London, you're in a lot of trouble. Um... That's right, anyway, especially on the metro. Let, yeah, ex well, exactly. Let me know when you have that uh, video ready to play. I would like to share it. My first reaction was was much the same as yours. It's very hard to get a, a full-on look uh, at the person in this video, um, who this girl, Christina David, is claiming to be. I thought maybe maybe a, a mentally unwell uh, homeless person. Uh, you know, you hear bird, and you think, where did they find that bird? Was it a bird they picked up off the street? Have they, uh, ha are they plucking and feathering and eating uh, uh, a pigeon? You know, it's a, it's a very, uh, in today's society, you'd almost say a, uh, a barbaric, act, uh, uh, a barbaric uh, act. Now, I have a ding here in the bottom uh, right of my screen. What is that, Davison? Oh, right now I'm just... <laughs> this is the video. Okay, go ahead. I'm not hearing anything. Is it is it playing, Davison? Yes, it is playing. Can our audience see it? If our audience uh, can um, enter in the comments section, whether or not they can see it, we're assuming you can. We're using the YouTube app within Google Hangouts. If yeah, there's no way anyone uh, listening via the live stream. Uh, the the audio stream rather can hear this, but continue. It's fine. Go ahead, play it, and we'll move on. 
Yes, and uh, we can also do it another way via screen share. If it doesn't work this way later in the broadcast, we will just do screen share from my computer and you'll see it playing Basically, it's, live it's, on it's, my screen. It's a chick doing something to a bird on a metro and, and a bunch of uh, people are saying they're going to vomit. Everyone's reacting and carrying on. There's, there's really not much more to it than that, but if we can show you, we'll show you. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to default right now to screen share because I know for sure that, that the audience that's live... Okay. Uh, via YouTube is going to be able to see it. So hang on to your to butts. My... And what? Hang. I said, hang on to your butts. Go ahead. <laughs> hang on to your feathers. You know, your feathers are about to get plucked. You might we'll get a little, a little irritated. Yeah. Okay, so I'm turning off the YouTube app. Uh, there we go. We're back to we, me. I love that we're screen sharing this because the quality of the original video was so great to begin with. <laughs> So hopefully you guys can all see this. This is the video. Very blurry. The woman is at the back. For those of you that aren't francophiles, vomir means vomit. So the woman you see her in the back bending over with a bag. And she's fiddling through the bag. What's she, what's she wearing People here? are running away from her. What's she wearing? Some type of bikini number? It looks like she's wearing a dress. Oh, I, I see a bikini. It's like a roar shark. Oh, you're right. It is more like a bikini. Anyway, you can, you can shut it off, Davis, and that's really all there is to see. And everyone's carrying on. As I say, must be a slow news day. Um... Why don't we get Christina David on the line? Why don't we let her explain this? We're going to bring her in. I wanted to have her uh, via cam. She doesn't want that. I, I want to respect that. And I want to get her side of the story because on Facebook, here's what she posted. She said that basically what was happening was I couldn't uh, wait, and I guess she means to eat this bird or to pluck the bird, uh, I only had one this year. It's not like we get to eat our country food every day. Uh, I believe Christina is uh, a nook. She's, uh, she's very proud of that on her Facebook page. Um, it's very, very rare that I can eat like I usually do up north. But I didn't care. I was just enjoying it. And on top of it, I couldn't wait to get home so I could put it in a big pan with some onions and mushrooms. Well, I don't know about you, Davison, but I haven't eaten as of yet. <laughs> it's... Uh, and, and I'll tell you something, you know, Davison and I, uh, I have a podcast, uh, BQWSC, and Davison has, you know, a, a myriad of uh, different YouTube channels. If, if, if either of us had known going down into a, a metro car and taking a, a, a bird and, you know, fidgeting with it would have, would have granted us this much uh, attention, I mean, I'd be down there uh, constantly. I, I'd be no <laughs> I'd be Maybe down we should to do right it, man. I, I say I'll we get a turkey. Get go ahead, honey. A quail. Yeah, I was say we should go down there and shear a couple of sheep. Why not? Okay, let's bring on uh, let's bring on uh, Christina. I'm anxious to hear from her. Let me play a bit of music here to introduce the uh, lovely Christina. Why not? Here we go, baby. Coming at you, Christina. Christina, Christina, Christina. Christina David, the alleged... Well, I think she admits to plucking the bird. But I don't think she admits to eating the bird. So, the alleged bird eater. But definitive plucker, I think. Hello? Hi, is this Christina? Christina David. Yes. Hey, Christina, it's Chris Wilding. Uh, Hi. And I am calling you uh, to to speak with you about this crazy, or maybe not so crazy, incident that happened uh, recently in the Montreal Metro. Did you expect to get this much attention when? Uh, I I didn't even expect to find out that like it would become big like this. How did you find out, Christina? I, um, I went to the. So over here in Kimazi, yeah, saying to bars and the cashier. I know her since I live here, so she said, "Hey, I yeah. I see you on the news. Is that you?" 
Wow. I say, what? And then she say, you're on the newspaper, Journal de Montréal. I'm like, no way. So I bought the newspapers and I checked it. I'm like, oh my God. So I started checking around internet, um, YouTube and everything. And like, I didn't know that it, it would be become known and now uh, Christina uh, have you done something like this before and I want to get into the intricacies of, of what you actually did because the newspaper and eyewitness accounts report one thing and I read some of your Facebook posts where, where uh, you report another so had you ever gone down with any type of animal dead or alive uh, in the metro system before in Montreal no like um, I would I didn't I didn't really care like where I was or like who's watching. Right. But that time I was inside the metro on my way home and I just got that ptarmigan from my aunt from at water and um like I was on my way home and I was just taking off the feathers that Now it. what what is a ptarmigan? I'm I'm not familiar with that. A ptarmigan is like a ptarmigan. It's kind of like a goose. Okay, so how how big uh, an animal are we talking here? What what can you compare it with? Um, a goose? It's kind of it's, it's just the same size as a pigeon, but it's not a pigeon. It's a ptarmigan. Like we hunt ptarmigan up north. And and you you are a nook. Yes, I am a nook. And you're very proud of this. And this is a food you would you would uh, a traditional uh, food up there. Yeah, it's it's country food. It's my country food. It's. It's not like we get to eat our country food every day. Right. Is this an expensive uh, bird? What? Is it is it considered an, an expensive meal? Is it considered a delicacy? Uh, expensive? Yeah. Is it is it is uh, it worth more? I actually, us in a way, we don't buy that. We we hunt it up north and right. um, we share it with our people. You see how ignorant I am, Christina? I didn't even know that, and that's a lovely thing. And yes, so, it is. So actually, you, we share it, like we give it for free to our people in the villages. So that's something that happens. It, it, you would think nothing if you were walking down your village and you saw someone on the side of the street or on their porch uh, uh, plucking the feathers off of a ptarmigan. That that would be completely normal. Like um, nobody would be like weird about it because it's completely normal. <laughs> It's so, our culture, like, you know, that's right. Now, did you our people? Did you notice when you went down in the metro? I mean, you 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 have this ptarmigan with you. What uh, what yeah, possessed you? I had you? the ptarmigan, but I I was doing it inside a plastic bag, and I did not eat that ptarmigan at all. People must have exaggerated. You're saying you didn't eat the ptarmigan in the metro. There was never any uh, consuming of the bird. I never ate it. I was I was just taking off the feathers inside the bag. Like at least I'm preparing it a little bit before I get home. Because right. I was so excited that I finally got to have some of my country food. Let me ask you something. Are white people too uptight? Are we making a big deal out of this for nothing? Yes. Right? It's a, it's a culture thing, yeah, isn't it? Um, actually, I'm okay with that because, like, I guess I'm the lucky Inuit person that got to be known in the world. From, from this ptarmigan. Imagine, you're in a metro, you have a ptarmigan, you think, I'm going to save some time before I get home. You begin plucking the feathers of the ptarmigan. Yeah, inside a plastic bag. Like, um, and I noticed... Like some people were recording me, but I didn't really care because I thought they were just trying to make a fool out of me or something. Well, I want I didn't care. I want to ask you about that because I, I'm I'm watching this video and it's very hard to see what you're doing. It's very hard to get a sense of who you are. You know, when I first heard uh, someone walks into the metro with a bird, my instinct and 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 quote unquote ate it. My instinct was it was a homeless person who had found maybe a pigeon or uh, you know something <laughs> you'd see on the side of the road. I think a lot of people thought this, and they were plucking and eating it raw, like a, a very barbaric mm. act, you know. No, uh, people really exaggerated about that, and it's not a bird; it's a ptarmigan, and um, like. People really exaggerated about that. I guess, like, 
they imagined it like worse than what it was going on. Yeah. I was just, it was inside a plastic bag. I guess they never see this kind of things that like they made a big deal out of it. Now I'm in everywhere and um, I'm, I just think that person that put that video on YouTube that made me famous. Yeah, of course, and for really doing something very harmless. But when when you were in there, and and did did, did the bird smell? Because it was it was a dead animal. Did it uh, not the bird, the ptarmigan? I, I'm sorry. Did was there an odor? Do you think? Because the metros are very confined and stuffy. Not not that much. Like it doesn't smell that much. But like, it's not even strong smell. But maybe and... you're used to it. You know what I mean? Maybe. Maybe the other people on the train. I mean, there's a lot of smells in the metro, let's be honest. But maybe a ptarmigan was the straw that broke the camel's back. You know what I mean? No. I, the only thing I was doing that I was just taking off the feathers. So, like, I didn't open it. I didn't take off the insides. I just take off the feathers. So that doesn't make any smell. Did you notice that people were uncomfortable? Did you hear? I, I heard uh, one gentleman yell in French, I'm going to vomit, and people were walking away from you. Me, yeah, I, I didn't care, actually, that time. I was just kind of laughing, I'm sorry to say, but yeah. um, it was just kind of funny, like, you know? I know what you mean. Listen, I, I tried so hard to give zero fucks from day to day in my life, and it's, uh, I'm, I'm too self-conscious of people around me. So in that sense, I respect you doing it. Do you have any regret whatsoever? I don't know if you've taken any negative heat regarding this incident. Do you have any regrets? Um, I, me, I'm just happy if people hate me or don't hate me, like me or don't like me, but mm -hmm. God bless everybody. <laughs> That's it. That's a very positive message. Now, let me ask you about this ptarmigan. When you brought uh -huh. it home. On a scale of yes, 1 to I, 10, how delicious? 10 being uh, outrageously good. How delicious was this ptarmigan? Uh, it was so good. I put it on a pan with onions and mushrooms and, like, I made rice and, like, oh my God. I cook it with onions and mushrooms. It was delicious. Do you think this might become a thing? Maybe this is your niche, going down into the metro and preparing exotic foods? Exposing no, people. No, like that was only one time because I, I wanted to be prepared before I get home. Like I didn't, re I didn't really think that like people would make a big deal out of it. But they're making a big deal out of it for nothing. But at least our people is gonna be known in the world now. Well, definitely, tarm. I mean, I didn't even know what a a ptarmigan was until this conversation. So I think you're definitely raising awareness. And, uh, yes. you know, I, ha I have to ask you, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people watching the video, their instinct, my instinct, I'll be honest, was, oh, you know, this must be a person with a mental disability or it must be someone who's, who's on drugs. And I'm talking to you now. You sound absolutely lovely. It seems like a case, perhaps, of uh, mistaken identity. People didn't know a bird versus a, a ptarmigan. Yeah, they... They just don't know our people that we eat our country food and stuff. They just don't know these kind of things. And um, if they really know about our people, like how we go hunting and like how we do things, they will understand. Uh, Davison, do you have anything to add uh, to this? I've been uh, jabbering on, and my, my co-host here, uh, Christina, is Davison. Uh, do you have anything you'd like to say, Davison? Well, I just kind of really want to know, though, didn't you sort of realize that what you were doing was a little bit transgressive and odd and that people might react to it strangely? Yeah, me. I, like I said earlier, I, I didn't really care how they would react because, like, I didn't even thought that it would get anybody's attention. I didn't really care who was saying that, you, or whatever because um, I just wanted it to be ready when I get home. <laughs> That's all I can say. You know, I, I have to say, Davis, and I do admire that, because I'm way too uptight. You know, if I don't wipe properly, I leave the house, I'm convinced everyone can smell it. 
So I admire this this attitude, and I think maybe it's a start of people perhaps preparing food on their way home. You know, in a safe way. I'm not saying boil your noodles or anything like that, but you know, time is so precious in life. And okay, I have to tell you something about yeah. that. Um, like I said earlier, it's not like every, we get to eat our country food every day. Right. That ptarmigan, that's actually the first and the only ptarmigan I ate this year. So it's very rare that I get to eat my country food. Right. And I've been living here since 2010. So it's been a long time that I didn't eat my country food. And um, I was just really excited to get home. So if anybody Let wants me, to buy yeah, go ahead. Okay, really quickly, if anybody wants to buy a ptarmigan and eat it, where can they go buy one in Montreal? <laughs> you can't buy ptarmigan in Montreal, actually. Um, only our people have it up north. Oh. Maybe, like, you can contact an Inuk person up north and um, buy it from them or something. I don't know. Well, like, yeah. You can only get ptarmigan from up north. Okay, wonderful. What were you going to say, Christopher? Well, I was going to I was going to ask you in general because what this seems to be to me at face value is a, is a culture clash kind of thing. How do you feel in Montreal specifically? You've been living here since 2007, you said? 2010. 2010, I apologize. How do you feel we we treat people as a city here? How how do you feel we treat uh, the Inuit people as a city in Montreal? Yeah, actually, like a lot of people are kind of like racist against our our people because, like, uh, I guess we're just pure people, you know. Like, do you experience uh, a lot of that? People, you uh, do you experience a lot of like, let's say, microaggressions or or people being uh, making racist comments towards you? Do you think this incident, perhaps? has a racial connotation, racial undertones, because you are Inuk. What's, what's that mean? Well, what I'm trying to say is, do you think if this was, let's say, uh, a, white, a white man uh, with a raw uh, chicken breast in his bag that he was doing something to, I'm not saying it wouldn't be bizarre, but do you think people were, it, it went so over the top with you because you are Inuk? Um, I'm, I think so. I, I'm not sure, but I think, yeah. Fair enough. Davison, anything else you'd like to ask uh, the lovely Christina here? Well, knowing now that it went viral, Christina, would you ever do it again? No. <laughs> one time thing, one time is enough because, like, I didn't. No, I would never do it again. Uh, Christine, I think you're missing up on a, a fantastic opportunity. I mean, if I were you, I'd get a bird's nest with, with live baby birds, and I would, I would bring them on a megabus going to Toronto, and I would regurgitate worms into their mouth. I would ride this thing until it, it, it had nothing left. <laughs> I mean, why not? You're a star. And you know what? You sound lovely. You have a positive message. You got to eat a delicious ptarmigan, and who knows, maybe now it will become a thing. Maybe people will send you more ptarmigans as a uh, thank you. Yeah, actually, like, a um, couple of people already um, offered me, like, to get, like, caribou meat or yeah. fish or uh, beluga skin or ptarmigan. Every there's a couple of people that's already offering me to send me some country food. Have you ever thought about bringing a moose on the metro and gutting it live in front of everyone? Really, <laughs> really, really freak them out. Uh, this thing that <laughs> happened, like what I did, was a one-time thing. I got gotcha. you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it like with others, and I want to eat. I never ate a moose. Actually, I said caribou meat. Right. Like, yeah. Well, ex excuse me, Christina, I'm extremely ignorant, I have to apologize, but, um, it, it, I mean, has your family heard about this? Have your friends heard about this? What do they think overall? Uh, yeah, everybody heard about this, and actually, everybody's actually proud of me, because at least people in the world will know who we are, Inuit yeah. people, but I'm, I have a couple of interviews, like, 
this week. So, like, after all those interviews, I think the whole world will, will know that, like, we're normal people. Who's interviewing you later this week? Uh, I just did an interview, like, on Friday oh, morning shit. on CTV News. Okay. Uh, I was supposed to go interview live today, this afternoon, but I fell asleep. Good. So Give us the exclusive. You're, you're next today, but tomorrow I have another interview with um, some radio. I think, I don't know which uh, you one. You know what, but. Christina, sleep through those two. They have nothing to say. Trust me, this is the show you want to be on. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do every kind of interview because, like, I want the whole world to understand. Right. And I want them to know that I'm really, really sorry about uh, making people ill. So you, you do feel bad that some people were put yeah, off. You have I empathy. Am, actually, I'm, I feel very bad that people, like, like got ill or something. Let me I'm ask you, th sorry for that. some of the articles said that the, the police were looking for you. Yeah, I don't know about that yet. Um, I haven't heard from the police, and I don't even know. And I don't think, I don't know, like... Well, if... if, uh, if I think it's pretty stupid that they make a big deal out of it. They have to make a police investigation. Oh, it's ridiculous. It's kind of wrong. I had a co-host on the like, show... I didn't mean it in a bad way. I'm really sorry, whoever, who I affected that day and I'm really sorry like uh, I made people puke and stuff I'm sorry about that you know I didn't what? mean to really make people feel bad you know what Christina you're absolved you did nothing wrong let me tell you when you go down there in that metro you take your life into your hands I know uh, I've, I've seen people do much 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 worse even if you were eating the bird I've seen and heard them do much worse, so don't worry about it. If anyone from law enforcement is listening, it was a ptarmigan. You have nothing on your... You can't, you can't arrest a girl for a, uh, a plucking a ptarmigan feather. I, I refuse to believe it. There would be protests in the street, and you sound lovely, and clearly you did nothing wrong. So Yeah, I did nothing wrong, and I don't need help. <laughs> I'm a complete normal girl, and I'm actually extremely smart. I, I can tell you're extremely smart of that, I have no doubt. Are you married? Do you have a boyfriend? Do you have kids? Yeah, I'm actually married and, and I'm actually married. And what I is have one daughter up north. Uh, she's three year old. Beautiful. Yeah. And what does uh, Mr. David think of all this uh, nonsense with the tarm again? <laughs> Mr. David actually yeah. is um I, I don't use his last name yet. That's, That's okay. You don't have to. But what does he think, your your husband, about the ptarmigan incident? My my husband is actually excited about it. He's like, he's very excited that people are making me famous. <laughs> they should give you like a reality show. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm telling like, you, if you want big ratings, you have to get back down on that metro and start cooking. And pluck more than feathers. <laughs> I want to see eyeballs. I want to see guts. I mean, we have to get real creative, uh, Christina. We have to. Actually, uh, people from up north on my Facebook are saying that. They're saying, like, we should go to Montreal <laughs> and um, eat country food and yes. stuff like that as a funny thing, you know? But wouldn't it be great to give you, like, a cooking segment? on a talk show, you know, where you come out and you prepare, like, your country's food. Even if it grosses people out, fuck them, you know what I mean? Like, this is Actually, what you like. like. They, will, they will be really interest, uh, in, interested, like, if they watch, like, how I, how Inuit people do it. I'm sure. They will actually be in, uh, entertained. I have no doubt. I mean, look, this all you were doing was taking feathers off a ptarmigan in a metro, and people are, oh, je vais vomir, and they're throwing themselves off the tracks. I mean, we're lucky no one died. Uh, yeah. And it would be their I own mean, fault. It would be their own fault, Christina. Yeah, exactly, and it's their own fault that they were watching me. <laughs> You know what it is, Christina? People don't mind their own goddamn business. I've noticed that, too. I, if, if I was on that metro car, I wouldn't have even known about the ptarmigan. I put my headphones in. I, I don't care what you're up to. 
you could cook a five a five course meal on that train. I would know about it. Um, me, I'm I'm just actually surprised that like everybody wants to do an interview on me. Like I I have an interview every day now. Good, you're 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 lovely. And as I was saying to my co-host before you you called in. You know, uh, I have a podcast, and my co-host has uh, several YouTube channels. And I said to her, you know, man, if we'd only known taking uh, a bird down into the metro and playing around with its feathers would have uh, garnered this much attention. I mean, we would have been down there with uh, macaws and uh, robin redbreasts and a whole bird sanctuary. I guess I'm the luckiest person you in are. Montreal <laughs> Christina, to be noticed. I thank you so much. Davison, do you have any parting words uh, for this lovely lady? No, I just have one little theory before we let you go. I think it's because uh -oh. a patar... A pata I was about to call it a patarmigan. Oh, Lord. A ptarmigan. Silence. Wake up, Davison. Wake up. <laughs> uh, it, resemb it resembles a pigeon. So I think what was freaking people out is that it looks a lot like a pigeon. I know because like it's the same size as a pigeon. That's why. But we we will never eat pigeons. That's that's not good. Ptarmigan never land in cities. Ptarmigan like only land in middle of nowhere. So like our our villages up north is like there's no roads connected. So it's like each village, fourteen communities. Each village is middle of nowhere. So well, imagine, it's like in between all nature, like natural nature. So we get to see like beautiful, um, beautiful animals like... Well, Christina... And ptarmigan and uh, stuff like that. On the phone right now, we have a pigeon calling in. He's very upset. He <laughs> believes you, you ate a pigeon in the metro. Go ahead, Mr. Pigeon. What, what do you want to say? He's very upset. How do you respond to that, Christina? <laughs> he, oh, it's not it's, a pigeon. That's disgusting. I hung up on him. He said a very vulgar word. Christina, you are fabulous. I hope you get to eat uh, as many ptarmigans as your heart desires. I hope all yeah. the lovely food from the north finds its way back to you. And I'm telling you, you got to go back down in that metro and get kookier. <laughs> Actually, one time thing is enough. So I, I think Perfect. I already got the world's attention. You did. You have mine, and that's all that matters. Christina, thank you so much. Have a great night. Uh, you too. Bye. Bye-bye. That was uh, Christina David. It's very uh, exciting. Ptarmigan, who knew? Well, I'll tell you, Davison, we've done it again. We have. We what? You know what, what I mean? We plucked. We plucked uh, the plucker live on air. I'll tell you what we did. We are writing society's wrongs. Here you have a, a, a metro car filled with obvious racists. Obvious uh, prejudices were uh, flying around that metro car at an alarming rate. And you and I, single-handedly, I don't know about this, this interview she did Friday morning. That never happened as far as I'm concerned. You and I, single-handedly, in this exclusive interview, have, dare I say, repaired in even the slightest way relations between uh, the, the very evil, dastardly white people that, that stole this land from the uh, honorable, noble, ptarmigan-eating natives. And perhaps you and I, through... A bit of jest, through candor, through a wink and a glance, have been able to, in some small way, repair those long befallen relationships. Or maybe she just went in the metro and she plucked a ptarmigan. Yeah, maybe she, maybe she just shouldn't have done that. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> I liked her though. I couldn't help but like her. Yeah, she was so sweet and kind and nice, and she seemed like she genuinely enjoyed the ptarmigan with mushrooms and onions. We'll see next week, she'll have body parts. Ptarmigan, you know, What's maybe that? some of these trendy, awful restaurants should get in some ptarmigan, call it the Montreal Metro Special. Well, that Joe Beef must serve ptarmigan. They're serving you everything from saber tooth to boar to uh, Al Gore. They're serving you everything over there. Uh, Davison, thank you so much. Why don't you go ahead? Uh, and to quote uh, everyone's favorite uh, feminine pad and training pad, plug your social networks, 
uh, and, and just, just plug in general. Go ahead. Where can we find you? You're lovely. You can find me at 100 jobs on Twitter, so spell it out, not the number. You, you can see it right here below me in my lower third right there. See, 100 jobs. And I also host a sexy comedy show called LOL Pervs. So uh, maybe I'll do something with birds on LOL Pervs. I, I'll fillet a pigeon in the Montreal metro. No, I won't. <laughs> You'll fillet or fillet? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? You're going to have to watch. You're going to have to subscribe to LOL Perps to find well, out. Well, if you like... Uh, uh, <laughs> if, you like if you like fellatio with birds, you will absolutely adore my podcast. I am Chris Wilding, uh, host of the Montreal uh, comedy podcast, the bi-quarterly women's social club. Get us at bqwsc.com. And hey, be a mensch. Subscribe. www.bqwsc.com slash iTunes. To subscribe on iTunes, and you'll hear uh, the entire audio from this uh, uh, wondrous interview. And uh, you'll you'll be enlightened. You'll learn about different cultures. You'll help uh, fight uh, 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 negatives in, in race relations. I don't even know what I'm saying. Subscribe, bqwsc.com. Davison, the last word is yours. Thanks to everyone on Reddit who watched this, and I appreciate your, com your comments as well as linking to a picture of a ptarmigan which I will put in the comment section. All right, baby. Talk to you soon. Bye, guys.